Hi everyone, my name is Carter, and today we're going to be discussing how to make a protein DNA bioconjugate using unnatural amino acids. What's really cool about this technique is that it's site specific, which is kind of unique for all the other techniques that are used to modify proteins. The goal of this video is to provide you an overview of the technique using a nature paper by Sinovich et al. And that's linked in the description. If you're interested in learning bioconjugation techniques like these, follow this channel by clicking that like button and that subscribe button, and you'll be notified anytime there's a new video about a different bioconjugate technique. All right, let's get into it. Unnatural amino acids are a great way to introduce moieties into proteins that can be easily attached to. Here's an image of an azide that's on alanine. And you can just buy this from Sigma Aldrich and introduce it into your proteins at the C or N terminus. The exact method of how to do a site-directed mutagenesis of a protein is presented in the paper in the description. You can also use other moieties such as tetrazine or SPGG. And these will also allow you to modify your protein and attach DNA to it. If you're one of the lucky researchers, who work with proteins that don't have any cysteines in the active site of the protein, then thiol-malamide chemistry can also be used to conjugate DNA to the protein of interest. However, the method that's presented here is orthogonal to the thiol-malamide chemistry because, as you know, a lot of proteins have cysteines. Once you have an azide incorporated into the protein, as we showed previously using site-directed mutagenesis, it's time to modify the DNA oligos. So here, you can order DBCO PEG NHS and amine terminated DNA from IDT, or you can just make them yourself. Your goal is to conjugate this NHS that's shown here with the amine using very standard bioconjugate techniques. NHS amine chemistry is really well known. And later, we're gonna use this DBCO, which also stands for dibenzene cyclooctyne, to react with the azide that's there on the protein that we just created. A linker such as this that has DBCO on one side and NHS on the other side can be purchased and coupled to the amine on the oligo. And this PEG linker in the middle is crucial because it helps reduce the amount of steric hindrance so that your conjugation has a higher yield. SPAAC, or strain promoted azide alkyne cycloaddition, is a very efficient reaction, and that's shown here. This azide, which is on the protein, can be coupled with the DNA oligo, which we just attached our DBCO to. And the final product looks like this. Because of this ring strain, this reaction has a very high yield. And once we've made the protein DNA bioconjugate, we can now confirm it with gel electrophoresis. So after the SPAAC, you can see the results here. PR65, which is a heat shock protein, was modified first with an azide by incorporating it using the site-directed mutagenesis we talked about, and then it was conjugated to oligos that contained DBCO using SPAAC, which is also called strain-promoted azide alkyne cycloaddition. And here in these results, you can see you have PR65 at the bottom, one or two oligos attached to the proteins in differing amounts. The paper also discusses other methods such as IEDA, which stands for inverse electron demand diels alder reactions. But we aren't really talking about that in this video. You can take a look at the picture if you want more details. I really like SPAAC because I've had previous success with it and it provides very high yields. And that's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed learning this technique for making protein DNA bioconjugates. Please click that like and that subscribe button so that you can learn new techniques just like this every single week. This is Carter signing off.